So as I mentioned last week, we will start a new text today. Now this text is not by Shankaracharya. The author is somebody called Sadananda Yogindra Saraswati. Of course, the word Saraswati will indicate that uh, the lineage is Shankara lineage only. And this text is called Vedanta Sara, which means the essence of Vedanta. And that essence we have to attract, we have to extract. So essentially, though it's called the essence, this textbook is a much more detailed and expanded version of Tattva Bodha, which we have already done. And unlike in Tattva Bodha, Tattva Bodha just gives the definitions of various terms. But here, Vedanta Sara, the author has not just given the definitions, but he has also mentioned the original Shastric source, which are the source of the definitions. And therefore, this text is usually... This text is usually uh, not um, an introductory text. It is not to be used as an introduction. And normally it is done only after one has completed the Tathvavada completely. And maybe some parts of the Bhagavad Gita and maybe a couple of Upanishads also. Because you'll find that there are many references to the Upanishads. Verses are quoted to show, to show that these are the original sources. And therefore, usually we say that Vedanta Sara should be used as a revision text. One should use it for, a, for the opportunity for Shravanam and Marana. Now, unlike, yeah, just like Tattva Bodha, this text is also in a prose form. And the original text, which uh, Sadhana Saraswati wrote, it was just running prose. I mean, uh, the author did not divide it into any chapters or topic-wise or anything. But later Acharyas, they have subdivided the book into five chapters, chapters, and each chapter has been divided into various topics. So you can call sections. You can call it verses also. They have not named it. I have named it topics. It can be called sections. It can be called verses. Now the first, the prayer verses, the first two prayer verses, they are in metric form, they are in verse form. And they are Mangala Acharanam, you know, the auspicious invocations. All other text is in prose form. The first verse is, as you know, in any, any text in tradition, you cannot begin the text without a Mangala Acharanam, without an invocation to the Lord, and also invocation to the Guru. So the first verse in this text is a is in, is in metric form. It's a, it's a verse form. And it's a Ishwara Namaskara. It's obeisance to the Lord. The second verse is Guru Namaskara for the removal of obstacles. Right. So we will now start with the chanting of the first verse. I'll just unmute you all. And... Please unmute yourselves and we will begin the chant. Akhandam Satchidanandam Akhandam Satchidanandam Avanga Manasagocharam Avanga Manasagocharam Atmanam Adilaharam 
आश्रये भिष्ट सिद्ध सो दिस इज दस्ट वर्स इट्स इनवोकेशन टू ईश्वरा सो इस इज अखिलाधारम सो अखिल आधारम अखिल मीन्स एवरीथिंग सो यू टू टेक इट एज सृष्टि is addressing the lord as akhila dharam the substratum of the entire creation and what is the nature of that lord akhandam satchid anandam akhandam sat chit anandam akhandam is undivided without a break so existence bliss and existence consciousness and bliss satchit anandam akhandam that which cannot have divisions divisionless satchit anandam and because it is divisionless satchit anandam it is it is a satchit ananda principle which we have discussed many times it cannot be experienced and therefore he says avanga manasa gocharam it is beyond walk so that avang a gocharam basically means which is can be grasped So avanga manasa gochar, that which cannot be grasped by the walk, the words, and by the manas, the mind, it cannot be grasped. And we saw the word for that in our earlier, what do you call, discussions. That which cannot be known, it's called a prameyam. That which is not a object of knowledge. And not only that, atmanam. having said that this is the lord he says atmanam that is jivatma also the lord is not different from the jivatma also and what does he do ashray i take refuge i surrender to that lord for what purpose abhishta siddhay to achieve my desire so that is the first mangala mangala shloka he is describing the lord and then he says i am surrendering the lord to achieve my desire now having talked about desires we should know that you have to answer the question is this very desire itself not a bondage because the whole purpose is for of the entire vedantic text any vedantic text the purpose is to give moksha and by saying abhishta siddhay to achieve my desire is he not going against the very purpose because desire itself is a bondage is it not and to understand that properly we know that desires are of two types so one is shuddha desire and one is ashuddha desire so shuddha kamaha ashuddha kamaha and we have talked about this in different terms we have said that binding and non binding desires so shuddha kama pure desire is binding is non binding desire ashuddha kama impure desires is binding desire what is a binding desire a binding desire is a desire if it is not fulfilled a desire which has the capacity to disturb your mind if that desire is not fulfilled it is called a binding desire and a desire which if not fulfilled does not affect your mind in any way but it is still a desire that is called shuddha kamaha non binding desire for example for a teacher to teach he may want to teach because for him the teaching is an is an opportunity to share his learning and not only that it is to for him to revise his own learning also but if he doesn't get the opportunity to teach it doesn't disturb his mind in any manner because he still can do the the revision by himself so while the sharing is an opportunity which will benefit others if for some reason on a particular day or a particular series of days he is not able to fulfill that desire it does not disturb him so that's that's example of shuddha kama non binding desires and shastra says that you can have any amount of dharmik or shuddha kama there is no problem at all 
In fact, even the creation itself would not have been possible had Ishwara not had a desire for Srishti. Right? Then what is the desire over here when, when Sadhananda Saraswati is saying, Avishta Siddhai, to achieve my desire, what is the desire over here? Sadhananda wants to write this book to share his knowledge for Loka Sangram, for the benefit of seekers. That is the first verse. Then he goes to verse number two, which is Guru Namaskara. I am unmuting all of you all. So please unmute yourselves and now we can chant. Arthathopyadvayanandan Arthathopyadvayanandan Atita Dwaita Bhanataha Atita Dwaita Bhanataha Guru Naradhya Vedantam Guru Naradhya Vedantam Aram Vakshaye Yathamati Okay. So, in the tradition, the Guru is considered equivalent to Ishwara. So, usually you will find that if there is only one Mangala Charanam, then that Mangala Charanam, Charanam will include both Ishwara and Guru. And otherwise, you will find there are two verses, one for Ishwara and one for Guru, because Guru Bhakti is considered as important as Ishwara Bhakti. And Shastra says in many, many places that for a person who has both devotion to Ishwara and devotion to his teacher, for that, that sort of a person, Shastra will reveal its complete meaning. And here, Sadananda is invoking his Guru he says, Arthataha api dvayanandan. He says, my guru is advaya ananda. So api, that you have to break it up. Arthato api advayananda. Guru is advaya ananda. He is undivided bliss. And guru aradhya. I worship that guru. I worship him mentally. And the word arthatata. Arthata means not only is my Guru Advaya Ananda by name, not only is he Advayam by name, not only is he non-dualistic by name, but Arthatata, meaning-wise also, he is Advayam. Which means that he has, he has understood that he is not different from Brahman. He has understood that he is Jnana Sarupa, he is a Jnana Nishta. And that is the greatness of the Guru. Not only is, is by name Advayananda, but by character also, by Swarupa also, he is Advayananda. And because of that, Atita Dvaita Bhanataha. Three words. Atita Dvaita Bhanataha. And why is he so great? Bhanataha. Because he has the knowledge. So Bhanam is equal to Jnanam. Bhanataha. Because he has the knowledge. And what is that knowledge? Aham Brahmasmi knowledge. And what has been the result of that Aham Brahmasmi knowledge? Dvaita Atitaha. He has taken him beyond Dvaitam. Atitaha means going beyond. So he has gone beyond Dvaitam. Now a person who has Advaita Jnana, we have to understand how can Advaita Jnanam be there with a person? How can, he, how can you say that a person has got Advaita Jnanam? <clears throat> As we said, Brahman is Apramaya. So that Advaitam can never be an object of knowledge. And if you have to have this Advaita knowledge, Aham Brahmasmi knowledge, there can be only one way in which that knowledge is existing in you. What is that? I am Advaitam. Advaitam here represents Brahman. So, Aham Brahmasmi means I am Advaitam. In that I am Advaitam knowledge, what is the difference between this 
This knowledge is also called aparoksha jnana. And the knowledge of any object is called paroksha jnana. For example, I have a glass in my hand, right? So this glass, I have <clears throat> knowledge of the glass. Now, if you ask me to define how that knowledge of the glass comes, then I have to say that I am the pramata, the knower of the glass, and I am using the pramanam, my eyes, and with that, I perceive the glass, which is the object of my knowledge. So there is a triputi here, there is a triad, pramanam, pramata, pramanam, prameyam, the knower, the tool of knowing, which is the eyes, and the object to be known. When that is the relationship, then that knowledge is called paroksha jnana, knowledge of an object by a subject. But in this advaita jnana, that is not possible because the subject and the object, who are they? I myself. So there can be no subject-object relationship between me and myself. Then that is called aparoksha jnana. And that non-subject object relationship can be expressed only in one form. I am Brahman. Right? The object is Brahman, the subject is Brahman and therefore there is no relationship. Actually speaking, <clears throat> there is, though we use the term relationship, there can be no relationship because relationship means two objects or two entities and here there is only one entity. So this is Aham Brahmasmi Aparoksha Jnana. So this guru has that upper of Shagyanam, and that is why he says Atita Dvaitaha. It has taken him beyond Dvaitam, which means now he has got Advaita knowledge. He knows that I am Brahman. And why is this important? <clears throat> because as a teacher, what are you telling your students? That you are Brahman. And unless I know that I am Brahman, what conviction will my words carry when I tell you you are Brahman? And that is why this Jnana Nishtha, the establishment in the knowledge that I am Brahman is very important for a teacher. So, and he says here, yeah, my teacher has that. And then he says, because of this, Vedanta Saram Vakshaye. Because of this, thou, I am going to Present the Vedanta Saram, Makshaye. I will talk about Vedanta Saram. What is the essence of Vedanta? I will talk about. And the essence of Vedanta, we all know, is expressed in one sentence by Shankaracharya Brahma Satyam Jagan Mithya. So he says, I am going to present the concept of Brahma Satyam Jagan Mithya. And he says, Yatha Matihi. <clears throat> so that is a as much. As I have understood, yatha matihi means according to my capacity, indicating that there is no pride and indicating that he is a very humble shishya and he will be a humble teacher also. So there will be no ego in play when he teaches his students. So this is Mangala Charana verses. Okay. Now <clears throat> let us look at topic number three. So please unmute yourself. The teaching starts here with the definition of Vedanta. So the metric verses are over. Now it is just plain old text. Vedanta Namaha Vedanta Namaha Upanashit Pramanam Upanashit Pramanam Tat Upakarini Sharirakha Sutra Dinicha Sharirakha Sutra Dinicha Okay. So here, Vedanta Namaha. Vedanta is that. What is Vedanta? I am going to explain, he says. And where did he, where did you come across the word? He says, Vedanta Saram Vakshaye, he said in the last verse. So having said that, he is going to explain the essence of Vedanta. Now, Sadananda thinks that I have to tell at least what Vedanta means. You know, so that I can decide whether I want to continue with this text or not. 
So Vedanta Namaha Upanishad. Vedanta is the name for the Upanishad. That is what he says. The explanation is Vedanta Namaha Upanishad. Vedanta is name for Upanishad. And Upanishad has two meanings, most of which you are familiar with. It can be broken into Upa plus Ni plus Shat. So Upa means sitting close to your teacher. Nishchaya Jnanam is Ni. Shat is destroyer of sorrow. So Upanishad, Atma Jnanam, which you attain, sitting close to your teacher, which means through Shravanam and Mananam and Nididhyasanam. Dar Atma Jnanam is Nishchaya Atma Jnanam. It is a definite knowledge, assimilated knowledge. What is its benefit? Shat. It is a destroyer of sorrow. And this Jnanam, where does it reside? It resides in the mind of the Jnani. And this has got a particular name in Shastram. It's called Pramarupa Upan, Upanishad. Upanishad in the nature of knowledge. That is the first meaning of Upanishad. And the second meaning of Upanishad is the words of the Upanishad itself, the words of the text itself are called Upanishad. There is a difference, okay? The first one is the knowledge which Upanishad has generated in your mind and therefore that knowledge, the locus of that knowledge is your mind. That is why it's called Prama Rupa Upanishad. Prama means the knowledge part. So that knowledge is in the, that Upanishad is in the form of knowledge, Prama Rupa. And that, obviously that knowledge is not in a textbook. It is residing in your mind because the words of the Upanishad have generated that knowledge in your mind. So that is the first meaning. Second meaning is the words itself of the Upanishad, the very text. And that, Upanishad, that is also called Upanishad and it is called Pramana Rupa Upanishad. That Upanishad, which is in the form of Pramanam, which will generate the knowledge. And here, when the author is talking about Upanishad, he says Upanishad Pramanam. So he is taking the second meaning. He is talking about the words of the text which are going to be read. So second meaning here is the word itself, the text itself. Okay. Now, <clears throat> tradition has it. Well, not tradition. In fact, what we read from various places, what, what we learn from various acharyas is that once upon a time, there were more than a thousand Upanishads. Most of them have been lost. And today we find that uh, some people talk about 200 Upanishads being available. Um, I believe there is a Gita Press publication which has 200 Upanishads. So those 200 are available, out of which generally people refer to 108. Okay, Out of the 108, there are 10 major ones. Or they are called Mukhya Upanishads, major Upanishads. It's not that the other Upanishads are minor. They are called major Upanishads because Shankaracharya has written a commentary on these 10 Upanishads. And in Brahma Sutra, <coughs> Vyasacharya refers to those 10 Upanishads mostly while commenting. So there is a small verse. If you remember the verse, you can remember the names of the Upanishads without struggling. That verse goes, Isha kena katho prashna munda mandu taitarihi Etareyam chachandogyam brahmadam bradaranyakam tatha. So, Isha kena kato prashna munda mandu ket etarehi. Etareyam chachandogyam bradaranyakam tatha. Those are the ten Upanishads. And it is good to remember this verse. That is why most of the teaching you will find that things which you need to remember, they are in verse form so that they can be memorized. And with these, you will never have, with this memorized verse, you will never be struggling to say which are the ten Upanishads. Now remember that apart from Upanishads, which are of course Vedanta, the Bhagavad Gita and the Brahma Sutras are also considered as Vedanta. And there are also many other texts which are called Prakrana Granthas, out of which one of these is one, or the, uh, the one which you are doing is one. And there are many Granthas written by various Acharyas, which are also called Vedanta. So you have Atma Bodha, which we have done. You have 
ವಿವೇಕ ಚುದಾಮನಿ ಯೋ ತತ್ವಬೋಧ ಯೋ ಪಂಚದಶಿ ನೈಷ್ಕರ್ಮ್ಯ ಸಿದ್ಧಿ ದರ್ ಆರ್ ಮೆನಿ ಮೆನಿ ಗ್ರಂಥ ಮೆನಿ ಮೆನಿ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ರಿಟನ್ ಬೈ ವೆರಿ ಮೆನಿ ಲರ್ನ್ ಆಚಾರ್ಯಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಿ ಪ್ರಕರಣ ಗ್ರಂಥ ಯೂಶಲಿ ದರ್ ಆರ್ ಟೂ ಟೈಪ್ಸ್ ದೇ ವಿಲ್ ಟೇಕ್ ಒನ್ ಟೈಪ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ ಐಡಿಯಾ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಉಪನಿಷದ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ವಿಧಾಂತ ಇಸ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಲೈಕ್ ತತ್ವಬೋಧ ಇಟ್ ಗಿವ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿ ಬೇಸಿಕ್ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ಸ್ and some granthas you will find that they take up only individual subjects and expand upon them so those are prakarana granthas expansions of upanishadic ideas and of course there is one text which which is a compression of upanishadic ideas what is that text bhagavad gita the bhagavad gita it's a it's a compressed version of the upanishads so he says tat upakarini the meaning of these upanishads have to be explained in these texts and also shariraka sutra dini cha in secondary texts like brahma sutra so don't get confused by that shariram sharira here means brahman so shariraka sutra is another name for brahma sutra why does sharira mean brahman because aham brahmasmi a no, little more you know clear understanding that in which brahman resides yes exactly so <laughs> brahman resides in shariram what resides in the shariram is called sharira okay so shariraka sutra has to be taken as brahma sutra so he says shariraka sutra adini in secondary texts like brahma sutra so that is the third verse now we look at the fourth verse so please unmute yourself asya vedanta prakranatvat asya vedanta prakranatvat asya vedanta prakranatvat ಅನುಬಂಧೈಲೋಚನೀಯೋಕೆ so asya vedanta prakranatvat because of this text being a prakarana grantha for vedanta so author is telling you that this is a prakarana grantha for vedanta and because it is a prakarana grantha for vedanta he says tadihai eva anubandhaihi the anubandha chatushtayam for vedanta tadvat siddhaihi applies here as well and therefore nate prathag gola chaniyaha and need not be discussed prathak separately he says the anubandha chatushtayam which is a must for any text so any vedantic text must have the mention of anubandha chatushtayam so author is saying that this is a prakarana grantha and other prakarana ganthas in vedanta you would have studied he is assuming that we have studied and therefore you are already aware of anubandha chatushtaya and therefore he says nate prathag alochaniyaha so that prathagolachaniya is to broken up prathak alochaniyaha need not be discussed separately whatever is the anubandha chatushtayam for vedanta will be applicable here also right now anubandha chatushtayam this is mandatory while writing a vedantic text and there's a verse which I, which i have talked about before which gives you the anubandha chatushtayam do you remember anybody remembers what is the verse adhikari cha vishaya sambandha prayojana verse you're, you're giving the names correctly well, <laughs> but you give the verse adhikari cha vishaya sambandhascha prayojanam 
ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರಾರಂಭ ಫಲಂ ಪ್ರೋಕ್ತ ಅನುಬಂಧ ಚತುಷ್ಟಯಂ ಇಫ್ ಯು ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ದರ್ಸ್ ಯು ನೋ ಅಧಿಕಾರಿ ವಿಷಯ ಸಂಬಂಧ ಪ್ರಯೋಜನ ಫೋರ್ ಆರ್ ದೇರ್ ವಾಟ್ ಡಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಮೀನ್ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರಾರಂಭ ಫಲಂ ಪ್ರೋಕ್ತ ದಟ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಗಿವ್ ಯು ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ಆರಂಭ ಆಟ್ ದಿ ವೆರಿ ಬಿಗಿನಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ವೆರಿ ಬಿಗಿನಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಪ್ರೋಕ್ತ ದಿಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಸೆಟ್ and this is called the anubandha chatushtaya and if you remember tattva bodha was anubandha chatushtayam discussed no sadhana chatushtaya anubandha chatushtaya what not discussed okay so as a you know once you finish this text as a mananam job in fact not just as you finish the text as and when you finish topics as a mananam job you should do one thing you should compare tattva bodha topics and the topics you have discussed in vedanta sara and prepare a comparison and then you will you will know what is the difference so we are not going to go into that it is for your homework in case you feel like studying okay so as i said this text has been divided into various chapters and each chapter has various topics so the first chapter had we have seen mangala charanam anubandha chatushtayam and guru upasadanam approaching the guru the teaching will begin from the second chapter onwards it is the same style as the as was followed in bhagavad gita and the upanishads okay okay now he talks about the anubandha chatushtayam do he has said and he said earlier that i don't need to discuss it right in the last verse but here he talks about it so we will chant it tatra anubandho nama tatra anubandho nama adhikari vishaya adhikari vishaya sambandha prayojanani sambandha prayojanani so this is he is discussing the anubandha chatushtaya so tatra tatra means what in vedanta there are four factors what are they adhikari vishaya sambandha prayojanani so in this, this in this verse in top, in topic number 5 he simply outlines these four and doesn't give an explanation the explanation comes from the next topic onwards next verse onwards which we will read so topic number 6 adhikari tu adhikari tu vidhivat 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 adhita veda vedangatvena adhita veda vedangatvena adhita veda vedangatvena apatato ಕಾಮ್ಯ ನಿಷಿದ್ಧ ವರ್ಜನ ಪುರಸ್ಸರ ಕಾಮ್ಯ ನಿಷಿದ್ಧ ವರ್ಜನ ಪುರಸ್ಸರ ನಿತ್ಯ ದೈಮಿತ್ತಿಕ್ಕ ಪ್ರಾಯಶ್ಚಿ ಉಪಾಸನಾ ಅನುಷ್ಠಾನ ಉಪಾಸನಾಶ್ಚಿತ ಸಾಧನ ಚತುಷ್ಟಯ ಸಂಪನ್ನ ಪ್ರಮಾತ okay so now, now you know what you are getting into adhikari so he gives a very long definition right 
And it's a very elaborate definition. It will continue for the next 10 and 12, 10, 12 verses. So, Vidhivat Adhita Veda Vedangatvena. You can understand? Vidhivat by Vidhivat Adhita. Adhita means to study or to go through. Vidhivat by studying in the prescribed manner. Adhita Vidhivat by studying in the prescribed manner. Vidhivat means according to Vidhi. In the prescribed manner. What is the prescribed manner? In the old days, the prescribed manner was in the Gurukula under a Acharya. So today also you can think of that as by studying it systematically for a sufficiently long period of time under a competent teacher. So that is Vidhivat. And what should you study? Veda, Vedanga. Veda and Vedanga. You have to study the four Vedas and the Vedangas also. Now, if you look at the word Vidhivat, what was the, you know, what is the ceremony following which a person is supposed to go, a boy is supposed to go to the Gurukula? Upanayanam. Upanayanam, right? So Vidhivat can be taken as Upanayanam ceremony. And of course, he has to follow some other rules also. And in the Gurukula, of course, those rules are not followed now anymore. But in the Gurukula, there were certain, uh, certain rules. So one of the rules was that first six months, there will be study of Veda. And next six months, there will be a study of Vedanga. Right? So after studying, the, and also, not only that, after the first six months, while he is studying the Vedanga, the subsidiary, subsidiary, ancillary parts of the Veda, while he is studying that, he will be regularly chanting what he has studied in the first six months, the Veda also, so that he will not forget. And so he will again repeat. After the Vedanga is studied, he will go back to the Veda. And so on, the cycle goes on. And there are several rituals uh, to this process while beginning the study and closing the study. All this you will find in Karmakanda. So all these rules, they have to be followed. That is what, what is meant by Vidivat. And if you do that, then, and you follow the pattern, then it takes between 8 and 12 years to complete the study. So you have the four Vedas, which you know, right? What are they? Rig Ved, Yajur Ved, Sama Ved, Atharva Ved. Atharva Ved, Atharva, Atharvana Ved also. And there are Veda Anga. Anga literally means the subsidiary parts. So, or the portions of. So, Veda Angas are six in number. And they have names, of course. One is Siksha. So those who have studied the Mundaka Upanishad are familiar with this because it is already there in there. So Siksha, pronunciation, Kalpa. Kalpa is that science which deals with the knowledge of rituals. Chanda, chanting. Vyakaranam, that is uh, grammar. Niruktam. The study of uh, how words are derived from the roots, from Dhatu. So, in English, etymology. Then, Jyotisham. Okay. Now, Jyotisham, I need to talk about a little bit. Because, let me ask a question. What do you understand by Jyotisham? When I say Astronomy. I'm studying... Astronomy. No, Raviji, you Astronomy. are trying that it is about the uh, details of doing the rituals, like the date, the time. Exactly. You had so once mentioned. Remember, that. Jyotisham is not uh, the, I mean, it is, of course, part of it, but it is not exclusively what we call predictive astrology, you know, using the stars and saying that this will have, this is your, this is your, uh, what do you call, Kundalini and all that. That is not the main purpose of Jyotisham. The main purpose of Jyotisham is to, uh, there are five Angas, five types Angas here is five divisions of time. In, in our uh, Shastram, there are five divisions of time. And you should know them because at least if somebody asks, you should know. The, those divisions are Tithi, Vara, Nakshatram, Yoga and Karanam. These are the five divisions. And because of these five divisions, you have a thing called Panchanga. Panchanga, we call it. It is basically Panchangani, five divisions of time. And what is this Panchangam used for? Its main use was for ensuring that 
the correct dates and the correct time is known because the karma kanda is very specific about doing rituals at particular times and particular dates so to ensure that those dates and time were known that is why the panchanga was developed so if you look at any panchanga you know uh, there is a site called prokerala.com p r o k e r a l a you have you have the time go and see and look for the panchanga you will find these divisions that tithi var nakshatram yoga karanam all these are there so jyotisham is for ensuring this remember that veda lays absolutely no stress on predictive astrology it is a very small part of it which seems to be the major part today but it is not okay so that those are the six vedangas <clears throat> and then he says apatato adigata akhila vedartha he has understood the entire veda akhila vedartha apatato adigata he understood the entire veda and that means he has been exposed to purana itihas he has a, he has lived in a vedic culture such a person what must do kamya nishiddha varjana purasaram he has to avoid kamya nishiddha karma so in practical terms you can say that all the kamya karma all the actions which you do for fulfilling your desires you need not you know switch it off immediately you have to gradually reduce this and this is the purpose of grahastha ashrama because grahastha ashrama provides you with the opportunity to fulfill your desires and over a period of time by fulfilling desires again and again and again with a hopes that you will realize that by the fulfillment of desires nothing major is going to be achieved that the desires do not reduce at all they are still going on to be going to be there and therefore you start looking at is there any other option apart from fulfilling my desires is there any other way for me to progress further okay all this we will see in detailed definitions later on in this text and what does this person do nitya naimittika prayashchitah three types of karma he performs two types of karma he avoids kamya nishiddha varjanam He avoids karma karma and nishiddha karma. Nishiddha karma means karma which is actions which are prohibited, specifically prohibited in the Vedas. Those he avoids completely. He reduces karma karma, and he performs three types: nitya karma, naimitya karma, and prayashchita karma. What is nitya karma? You are uh, some some things are prescribed for you. Sandhya vandana is prescribed for you. All Agni Vatram is prescribed for you. Pancha Maha Yagna is prescribed for you. All these are Nitya Karmas, regular Karmas, daily Karmas. So Nitya here should not be taken as eternal; it should be taken as daily. Then there is Naimitya Ka Karmas, which means Karmas which you have to do. Veda says you have to do, but they are not on a daily basis. They are on the occurrence of specific events. For example, attending a marriage. attending a death ceremony these are all naimitya karmas and prayashchita karmas are in the way of by way of penance if you have committed some you know sin knowingly unknowingly some papam knowingly unknowingly then you do this naimitya this prayashchita karma as a penance to to neutralize the effect of that karma in the sense this prayashchita karma will generate punyam which will hopefully balance the papam which you have generated from doing the other karma which you are not supposed to do all this falls under what karma yoga so kaika karma karma done by your body right that is the first portion and then he says upasana anushthanena apart from kaika karma apart from bodily karma which is karma yoga he must do upasana manasika karma meditation he must do a meditation has two purposes one is for concentration and one is post jnana meditation which we call nididhyasana here he is talking about upasana as concentration meditation pre jnana meditation for studying your mind for developing sadhana chatushtaya and after a long practice of this what will happen nirgatha nikhila 
kalmashataya he becomes free of papa nirgata means going away okay disappearance going away so even for a seeker even uh, wealth and even heaven swarga are obstacles remember because they take you away from your spiritual progress so nirgata means gone goes away what goes away nikhila kalmashataya he becomes free of all sins and any papam with a, a scripture regards any papam as an obstacle to spiritual sadhana so what is the result of the papam having gone away he says nitanta nirmala swantaha so nitanta means completely nirmala means free of any mala that is pure nitanta completely nitanta nirmala means pure and swantaha is another term technical term for the mind so the result of all the papam having gone away by a by the practice of all these sadhana is that he has a nitanta nirmala swantaha he has a completely pure mind in our words samatvam is there shanti is there low fir is there his mind does not get disturbed very easily and of course you have to add here the additional benefit is that by the practice of upasana the mind gains dharana shakti concentration power for long durations okay and here he quotes he quotes a shruti quotation tasmai sa vidwan upasannaya samyak prashant chittaya samanvitaya enaksharam purusham veda satyam provacha tam tatvato brahm vidyam that's from mundaka upanishad so this person gains a completely quiet mind is he has got shama and he has got prashantam completely quiet mind and a yena aksharam purusha veda he is able to understand brahman veda satyam provacha tam tatvato brahm vidyam he understands he attains brahman in this very life so that's a quotation from mundaka upanishad why is he giving this because this is the shruti vakyam this is the uh, upanishad vakyam from where he has said that by a, by this long practice this person will get a pure mind and that pure mind will enable him to get moksha so this is the he is saying that these are not my words these words are that of the upanishad itself that, that is why he has quoted mundaka upanishad and then he says asmin janmani janmantare va so he says here that this sadhana chatushtayam must have been asmin janmani must have been attained by that sadhaka in this life asmin janmani and if you find that the person has not done any karma yoga and upasana yoga in this life and yet he is a he is a moksha purusha he is a jivan mukta then he adds va janmantare in the previous life he must have followed this discipline right so this answers you know some of the questions like if you look at this group itself you will find that some people are old some people are very young so the question can come how come you know some of you who have just little over 20 have got interest in vedanta at this very young age because you didn't have sufficient time to go through karma yoga and upasana so this answers that yes this interest is generated because janmantareva that discipline must have been followed by you earlier and that as krishna said in the 6th chapter that samskara carries forward it does not get destroyed and therefore when you are born here in this life you are carrying the samskara with you which has dragged you to vedanta at a young age so the benefit of earlier sadhana is carried forward into the next life krishna says very clearly in chapter 6 40th verse if you want to revive if you want to you know, have a reference and then he says sadhana chatushtaya sampanna pramata such a person pramata pramata is seeker of knowledge the knower so such a pramata such a person has qualified himself sadhana chatushtaya sampanna he has got all the four disciplines he has he has got all these four qualities and sampanna means he is full of so sadhana chatushtaya sampanna 
that person is a qualified adhikari so adhikari is the person who is qualified for this journey and pramata therefore he is a pramata only for such a pramata vedanta will operate as a pramanam so it's a very subtle point unless you have sadhana chatushtayam you may be attending the same class with the same acharya for the same number of years some people will understand they will transform themselves their lives will get transformed for some people it will be only information so whether it is information or transformation for you that is the, that is that is decided by how much of a sadhana chatushtha sampanna person you are very very subtle point so with this i'll stop here in case there are any questions as you can see there are many topics here which we have covered which we didn't cover in tatva bodha sir you mentioned the five aspects of time i couldn't get the fifth one i will i will put it up for you with uh, okay. i think i'm given it somewhere else also probably in upanishad class okay thank you yeah. hey, uh, arunaji uh, boliye as in tatva bodha also the introductory statement that uh, sadhana chatushya sampann adhikari nam moksha sadhana bhutam tatva viveka prakaram vakshamah yeah. so was that not related to anubandha chatushya uh, he didn't give it he adhikari he says it is meant for this person but he didn't give the other thing the prayojanam the sambandha all that is not given so here he gives all of them so the difference okay okay thank you ravi ji uh, verse is called topic in this uh... yeah that topic is just a name that i have given okay okay, okay. This, uh, basically as i said the original uh, text by sadananda it doesn't okay. carry any divisions at all okay. there are some acharyas who have divided it into chapters the so chapter name is i have kept as it is chapters some people call it topic some people call it section so i just kept oh. it as topic yeah thank you it can be called verse also though really not in verse form it's a statement form okay so if you have nothing we can look at the topic number 7 so we will chant that acharya i have one question yes john sorry can you please repeat the verse to memorize the upanishads and the one to memorize the anubandha uh, chatur i will i will i will put it in the group okay you can help for you will be easy okay so we look at topic 7 kamyani 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 swargaadi ishta sadhanani swargaadi ishta sadhanani jyotishto madini jyotishto madini so he has talked about various types of karma he has talked about kamya karma then uh, namite karma i talked about all that so here it takes the first topic that is kamyani kamya karma he says and is defining kamyani kamya karma etc is defined how he says uh, let me just give you a brief of what kamya karma is any action which is performed for fulfilling our materialistic desires so if i want a house or i want a car or i want to get married and after getting married i want to have children and then i decide that you know i want to go to heaven so i'll do a you know homam for that all those are kamya karmas they are basically meant to fulfill your desires now many of your kamya karmas are worldly like yeah, they are called laukika it's not religious secular kamya karmas for example i earn money so that i can buy things so that i can run my house so i can buy a tv i can live comfortably right so these are all laukika kamya karmas so you can call it secular secular kamya karmas karmas there is no religious aspect involved in this but when i perform a ritual for getting material benefits so look at the difference i am going and working 
from 9 to 5 every day so I can earn some money, so I can buy some material things. So that is secular karma, laukika karma. But I can adopt another route. I can do a ritual for getting material benefits. So that is a ritual prescribed by the Veda. So it's a Shastriya karma, not laukika karma. Right? This is also called Kamya karma. This is also Kamya karma. And here he gives an example. He says, Swaragadhi Ishta Sadhanani. Ishta Sadhanani means for desired ends. Ishta is desired. Sadhana is the end. What you need to do. So Ishta Sadhanani like Swaragadini. So any kam, any ritual done for desired ends like Swarga, like heaven. Okay. For example, why heaven is taken is because the highest, you know, favorable result of karma is to go to heaven or to go to Brahma Loka. That is the highest favorable result of karma. So ishta favorable, sadhanani, it is a result of the karma, like swarga, etc. So he says any karma done for these kind of ends, that is called a Kamya karma. And he gives an example. Jyotishto Madini. Jyotishto means a Vedic ritual prescribed for going to karma. Jyotishta. It's the Jyotishta, Jyotishta Adi. Jyotishta Homa. Jyotishta Homam is a Vedic ritual which is prescribed for going to Swarga. And so he says to go to Swarga, to achieve a desired end like going to Swarga, you may want to perform a ritual called Jyotishta Homam. And that ritual is classified as Kamyani, Kamya Karma only. So he has defined Kamya Karma. And in the next topic, which we will take up in the next class, he will define the rest of it. Nishiddha Karma, Namitya Karma, Nitya Karma, all those things. So with this, I'll stop in case you have any questions. So right now, it you are seeing little bit only, some taste you have got of the how he has presented an Upanishad statement here to back up his statement which he has made. Similarly, you will find that wherever he makes a statement, we accept that statement at face value because it's a Prakarana Granta, but he doesn't want us to take that at face value. So he says, I have not you know, invented this on my own. The backup is Shruti or Smriti. So he gives all those. He also quotes various Acharyas. Panchadashi he quotes. So a lot of things he quotes. It's a very interesting book that way. So with this, I'll stop here. So Yeah. So Jyotish Tom is like the Pancha Yagna and all that. No. Pancha Yagna is uh, Nitya Karma. Jyotish Tom is Kamya Karma. Jyotish Tom means that you are doing it specifically See, with a with a sankalpa saying I want to go to heaven after this body is dead. Mm -hmm. okay. It has got nothing to do with Jyotishtam, okay? It's just called Jyotishtam, that's all. Yeah. So okay. Thank you for your patience. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamadachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnam Eva Vasishya Om Shanti 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 Om Tatsat Om Namah Shivaya Thank you for your patience. Om Namah Shivaya Thank you, sir. Om Namah Shivaya Thank you.